timely to invite some guests along uh, to talk to us a little more about that and look, looking forward to hearing your stories and experiences as well as we progress through the morning. I'd like to start the meeting uh, with acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we're meeting today and pay respects to elders past, present and emerging and particularly welcome any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are with us at the meeting today. Uh, we've got a fairly full agenda as usual, as you've come to expect. Um, so what we're going to do is um, we're joined by some uh, guests this morning who are going to share with us some of their knowledge and experience. So we're going to hear from Jerry and from Beck uh, first up. Uh, then we've had um, very kindly a couple of organisations uh, who are going to share some of their stories and experiences with us and then we're going to leave plenty of time for questions. So I think what we'll do is get underway with Jerry, your presentation first. So welcome um, to Jerry Marston who is going to tell us, um, who is director from the Incus Group but is also involved in SIMNA, um, an important initiative that I think we need to know a little more about. So I'm sure you're going to share that with us, Jerry. Would you like to yeah, give us a little bit um, I both am an old man and look like one at the moment because I've got a back, uh, I had a back injury that's just starting to recover. So thank you very much for your indulgence. I normally wander around a bit faster than this, but it's my best. Um, uh, Anne Marie, thanks very much, and um, and thank you for inviting uh, myself and, and of course Beck to to, uh, to share our thoughts and insights um, on on this important topic. Um, what I'm going to do um, really is just talk a little bit about where I think are and why the Outcomes Mission has found itself onto our agenda big time, and then a few thoughts about where it might go and what it means what it means to you. It's not going to be long. I think you want to uh, have the chance to talk and, and uh, sh share your thoughts as well as just listen to us. So um, I'll just go through a few slides and uh, feel free to jump in and ask questions or tell me I've got it wrong if you think that's the case. Because, you know, no one has a monopoly on knowledge. Emerging kind of um, area of, 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 of interest and expertise. Okay, so um, Amory mentioned SIMNA, and I'm, I'm here wearing two hats really. Um, SIMNA is the Social Impact Measurement Network of Australia, and SIMNA Queensland has an organising committee which I uh, help set up and co chair. Um, and it's a knowledge sharing network for social impact measurement. What, we, what we're doing is running a whole <coughs> series of different meetings in different places to try and just um, raise awareness of outcomes measurement. Bring along, bring along people who um, who get got going in this area. Outside ex experts, we've had people from abroad and also from uh, down south. Just sharing the, the knowledge of outcomes measurement, and then at the same time, getting feedback from uh, the audience. It's about 60 or 70 people at any one time. We're getting a, a good crowd, which is uh, which is uh, which is good. Um, my my reason for being involved is because in my day job, I'm um, part of the Incus Group, and we spend our time working with. Design it to, uh, to measure it, to it, and we've got a very big interest in training and capacity building, and that's something I think we'll be covering today, both myself to an extent, and also back the, the notion that we need to upskill and develop understandings in the sector on this area. So, why measure social outcomes? I think there's just three chunks there that I always put up on the on the on the screen. Um, we're operating in an increasingly competitive and sophisticated funding environment. That's that's for sure. Um, and both philanthropic and corporate investment um, uh, um, organisations, sources of funding from those two um, uh, uh, sectors, are keen to start, keen to understand and better, better understand the value of the services that they uh, uh, are supporting or relying on. Um, government has got itself into um, uh, you know, quite a strong position here in terms of understanding the need for, for our outcomes measurement to be part of their thinking. Um, I think it's definitely a work, in, a work in progress, and we'll talk about that uh, a little bit today, perhaps. But you can see from NDIS, from Paint by Outcomes projects, and from the um, social benefit bonds that you see in, here in Queensland and, and beyond, there's a whole lot of new thinking around um, funding for outcomes, and that's something that's actually a, a big feature of the lives of, of, of the sector. Um, and then companies particularly moving away from pure philanthropy to a business-aligned um, set of objectives um, that, that align what they're doing in the community, what they're doing uh, in their business, and then looking at new ways of, of, of and new frameworks and tools for understanding that. So you'll have heard of that SROI, creating shared value, collective impact. These are new 
areas of, of uh, development around corporate, particularly corporate funding, that's pushing us all towards understanding and, and, and responding in an outcomes-focused way. Make sense? So there are kind of external and, and internal perspectives on this. And externally, um, as I've, I've just said, um, we're getting to a more consumer client focused um, way in which um, services are being assessed and delivered. So it's about helping, helping clients and consumers to make the right choices. It's recognizing that activities and outputs don't just uh, are limited in the way in which you can understand what you're doing. The requirement to report across a whole range of different um, uh, settings, both both your own and also the ones that your funders require is growing. Um, knowing what works is important and there's this whole demand for more rigorous me measurement and more public reporting on what organisations are actually achieving. I've been in this business for over 40 years now and I've regularly come across a whole lot of comments um, around, um, not negative but certainly challenging comments around, what's all this, where's all this money going? It's going there, it's achieving nothing, nothing's changing. More recently, how many of us have heard um, have, have been in conversations where the, um, the closing the gap comes up and everyone talks about nothing being achieved? It's not actually true, but there's a sense in which people want to start seeing some measurable achievements. It's out there, and I think we've got to be both responsive to that external um, demand, but also when we think about inter our internal, the way we think about things internally, outcomes should be the fundamental purpose of it. We should be thinking about much more about what's the purpose, what are we trying to achieve here, what outcomes are we looking for, not what numbers do we need to um, uh, create for, for our own and other purposes. Um, and, the, and outcomes is, is, is the most meaningful. So. Just quickly, and uh, Beck, Beck will spend a bit more time on this uh, with, with examples, I guess, uh, we'll un unpick it, but uh, outcomes goes, it goes further than, than just looking at what you do, so it's not about the numbers of participants, the number of deals, the frequency of visits, that kind of numbers game, um, because what, what if, you, if, you look at all, if you look at those kind of, those numbers that are recorded, the, the question that regularly you, you want to ask yourself, well, so what? So we've, so we've, we've got 25 bed spaces in three locations, They've all been filled, 80% occupancy. We've delivered 15 counseling sessions and an average of 10 people have turned up. You know, we all want to know, well, so what? So what happened there? What was the result of that? That's just the numbers, what happened? So it's difficult to comprehend how you, how you need to move from uh, essentially the quantitative um, assessment of what you're doing to a qualitative one. It's easy to say. Um, and that's the, th this, this, this thing, the strange phrase that came into my life about six years ago and I live with every day, the theory of change. Um, I wish there was a different way for it, a way, way to express it, but this is what it is. Inputs, i.e. the resources that you invest in any particular initiative, create activities like volunteer days, better health campaigns, or fundraising events if you're a fundraising organization. And the outputs are usually, as I say, quantitative. Um, but the thing that we need to start spending more time understanding is the change that occurs as a result of those activities. So are we improving the well-being of communities or of families? Are we reduce the, reducing reliance on crisis, crisis support? Is there improved access to services as a result of our activities and our outcomes? The theory of change, beautiful color. Um, hey, look, we've got time. That's, that's really surprising. Um, so where next? And look, I, I think we should just, um, spend a few moments looking at my, my assessment of where, of where next because I think it's, um, you know, I've, I've said this several times and got in different settings now, people are feeling this is, these are, these are some of the kind of challenges. Government funding will increasingly be focused on reporting against outcomes rather than outputs. It's at a transitional stage and Beck and I had a brief chat just now about what that transitional stage means. It means that um, in the public sector, um, I know I'm talking to a number of people who are connected there, it's still a work in progress, still a learning process, and we're actually working with a number of um, state government and uh, federal departments around developing their, their capacity to actually work in this area. But payment by outcomes, funding by outcomes, is, um, is, is, is definitively on the, on the government agenda and will grow um, over the next period. It will reach all areas too. It, 
it's a it's a rolling stone. It's a gathering moss stone, like that's good rather than that. Um, one of the th and in that in that movement, what I really feel worried about, having been uh, be, been involved in and chairing a smaller organisation in the last seven years, and being involved with medium-sized organisations from all sectors, is there's a real danger that um, the capacity to respond to this new marketplace is going to be most most deeply felt by the medium and small organisations who haven't got the resources to fund um, large-scale outcomes measurement frameworks or uh, whole processes to get to the point where they can compete on a level playing field with the big boys and girls. And um, I reckon that um, I've called this affordable, an affordable outcomes measurement reporting process, this group or a series of processes is going to be needed. Um, something that Beck and, and, and I in different ways are working on too to, to find a way in which not just the and I say this with affection because there are clients to the endeavours and the Anglicares of this world, but also the small organisations that for whom the same the same um, requirements will apply, uh, but who haven't got the resources to make that happen. How do we we, we recognise we're going to have to spend some time working on uh, supporting those groups because they are the majority actually. This point about stakeholder expectations, um, clients, consumers, the general public. Um, Boards of organisations in every guise. I'm finding, and I'm, well, I'm part of that process. Um, boards, you know, the decision-making governing bodies of organisations are starting to push for um, uh, uh, and to pressurise for better accountability in, in terms of what you're, what, what the what they, the organisation they're sitting <laughs> over, what it's what's, it's it's achieving, rather than what it's just doing. And I think one of the things that we'll see in, 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 as time goes on is a, is a need for investment in work and workforce capability across the whole of the, um, of the sector and across the whole of this work. Uh, we're doing a lot of it now and I think there's more to come to actually upskill and get, build the capacity of um, people working in organisations to do this themselves. Um, outcomes measurement specialists are <laughs> thankfully, I say thankfully, no they're not, they don't mean thankfully, they are realistically. Um, not, new, not numerous, and they'll never be able, we will never be able to accommodate um, uh, and to provide support to the need that sits out there. It's going to need, to, it's going to need a lot of capacity building and a lot of self-help development. So I think for small organizations um, for whom these pressures are appearing, upskilling the workforce is, is timely and, and, and will be, we'll, you'll see a lot more of it. Um, and I think the, the last, uh, yeah. Um, the last two points, I think, are pretty self-evident, but um, one of the things that outcomes measurement does far more, far more than the outputs kind of measuring and reporting process, is provide organizations, provide um, charities, provide uh, initiatives with the means to distinct, has a distinct history and a distinct purpose, but there's lots of common ground and lots of, lots of common purpose too. And I reckon that over time, the outcome measurement field will be characterized by more and more collective work, more and more collaboration. I don't mean amalgamation, I just mean collaboration across specific issues so that we start to understand um, the, the, fr uh, the, what the framework is for particular kinds of work, how you measure the outcomes there, and how you share that across a whole range of sister and brother organizations doing the same thing. That collaboration is both going to be important and necessary as time goes on. Um, that's me. Hey, look at that. Not too Funding that's available, I guess, to support evaluation, um, building internal capacity um, to undertake that work is, is often very limited. Yeah. So the focus is on delivery of frontline services. Um, not so much the measurement of the impact that you're having. So whilst you're saying that government are interested and looking at this closely, do you think they're also looking at their funding models as, as to how that they can support um, the organisations they fund to do this? Look, I, I, that's an extremely good question. I'm not saying that because I haven't got the answers I have. That's a good question, it's an important question because the answer is I think at the moment they're not. They're saying it's going to happen, but they don't recognise that sitting behind that requirement is going to be some funding to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So you know, I, think the, I think part of the lobby is, lobbying is to... Uh, ...the resources to be able to demonstrate that we are achieving it. And I think that's a read across to government, of course. 
it's work in progress. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd like now to introduce Beth Crompton. He's the founding director of Onwards to Outcome, Onward to Outcome. And I think Bev, uh, um, Beth, as Jerry indicated, um, has been doing some work similar to the Incas Group mm -hmm. and other work and worked with a number of organisations in Queensland, including ourselves. So mm -hmm. we really look forward to hearing um, you uh, from you, Beth, and you sharing your knowledge. Thank Thanks. you. Um, hello, everybody. And before I go any further, I'd also like to um, acknowledge Jan, um, to, to look at how the first steps that you can take as an organisation. And the, um, my, my experience in that lies in the UK when I was um, um, a programme director um, and then also um, the implementation director for an organisation um, and it was my role to actually transition from outputs to outcomes measurement. So that's where I'm coming from. So um, Jerry's given the overview, I'll give a little um, So the intended outcomes that a program will be looking to make are helping people to move, clients to move from a worse place to a better place, psychologically, emotionally, physically, health-wise, in, in all sorts of different ways. So that's the basic premise upon which we're working. It would be remiss of me not to say and acknowledge that of course outcomes can be negative and they also need to be measured because that's your greatest learning really. Um, but the intended outcomes of a program will be positive be um, moving to a better place. So, who's seen this slide before? Yeah. <laughs> Just have a quick read. So, the miracle are outcomes. Those are the changes. So how, what are we measuring anyway? Well, we're measuring change. And I'll say it again, we're measuring change. We're measuring change from one place in somebody's life to another place in somebody's life and what happens in between. We're measuring changes in awareness, behaviour and conditions. And I'll come on to that in a little bit more detail. And we're doing this over time. And I very specifically use this image um, as an evolution image, because whether you believe in evolution like this or not, we're talking about human advancement on a personal level and a societal level. individuals making their own changes in their own lives and becoming less reliant on services. So this is really where it's at. So these changes in thoughts or emotion might be counselling sessions or physio sessions or whatever it might be um, that then bring the person on to actually making behavioural changes in their own life. So this might maps together and actually map out the ABC changes that you're looking at and then agree your program attribution and contribution which is really just what are we as a program taking responsibility for bringing about in people's lives and people like to say organizations like to say we're changing the world we're doing this you know really high aspirations and the funders have the same high aspirations and that's really dangerous because actually when you really interrogate and look at what impact are we going to have from this counselling session? Often it sits in the A column, not in the B column, that you can actually take responsibility for. But that's always a very interesting discussion. Um, the next stage is to First of all, it's a real recognition that there needs to be a two streamed process of work. So you'll have the organisation, the programme, aiming to, for instance, reduce homelessness, um, and you might have your inputs, time and money, outputs as you build homes, you reduce homelessness, um, there's more safety and every person has a home. So those, that's your basic, you know, raison d'etre, um, why you're here, what you're doing. But really <coughs> recognising that there is another stream of work which deserves priority, which is recognising that maybe you have a low outcomes measurement capability within the organisation you put some time and money into it and actually make it a priority. You have an output of high measurement outcomes capability with some of the training or whatever it is that your learning method is. 
and then your outcomes are put for this piece of work is around outcomes-based decision making. So you're making evidence-based decisions and making outcomes and that by improving the service continually. So it's this two-stream pro two process that's really important. And the six steps that Onward to Outcomes does and, and can hold organisations and programmes through There are, they, they are out there and they come in many guises and forms. So that's expert guidance that you'll need there to do that. Inspired through group study, and I use the word study hesitantly because it kind of scares some people, but it is learning a new skill. This is a whole <coughs> field here with lots of theory and different ways of doing it and approaches and underpinning practices, and you'll need to get up on that so that you can see what works best for your organisation. So that's training and mentoring. understanding what the decision-making process is around what you do with the results for instance who has the the, um, the authority to actually make changes in the program and in the service delivery what conversations need to happen um, it's those sorts of systems and processes that really underpin the practice of outcomes measurement for leadership particularly there are messages around actually making space in the organization and that sometimes means very practically allowing people to go offline in order to and people need to be staff need to be given that space to actually delve into it and do it um, make the organization's outcomes measurement journey visible so as leaders And then lastly, connect with the wider outcomes measurement community of practice. And I mean that globally. So we have SIMNA, which is fantastic, right on our doorstep here, regular events going on, lots of people turning up, everybody learning together. And then there's also Social Value Australia, there's Social Value UK, so there's lots of resources online too. So just really in, you know, connecting with an already existing um, sector, as it were, that's interested in really digging down and learning more about the whys of what's working. So my last slide is what happens if you don't do this? And really, what happens is that programs go round and round in circles because you just don't have the information that you need in order to really make a difference in people's lives in a sustained and improved way. So things kind of go up and down a bit like this, and they might go up, but they're going up much slower than they might otherwise, so it's a real missed opportunity. In perspective absolutely mm. um, and I think taking those skills then into the very practical program level and yes building your capacity and your confidence as a program manager or a leader within an organization to actually have those really meaningful conversations with funders about the, their processes and the way that they what they are asking of us mm. and if you get very clear about what your expectations are and what your attribution and contribution will be then that's the nub of your argument because you can show very clearly that these are the changes which we understand you want to happen and we also want to happen over time. But in this time frame, we're only going to be able to de deliver this with the amount of money you're giving us and so this is where our results will be, this is what we'll be measuring. Is that okay with you? Those of you who don't know us, oh, have I got a sticker? Yes. Oh, the one, yeah. Oh, sorry. It's just. Yep. That's it. Yes, oh, that's, that's it. it. Yeah. So Mark has been working towards. I'm oh, sorry. So I'm Maria Liebig. I'm the team leader, Mark Project for the Innovation Performance and Evaluation Team. At Mark Projects, we have been on a journey looking at our, how we measure our outcomes. So we're actually in it at the moment. Um, it, online, it's on the um, talking about results. Oh, oh, this is probably how I'll walk through. So when you reflect maybe back on what I've talked about today, this is a really good um, thing to look at. 
because this is what I'm doing, what I'm going to talk through today. So, Mica Projects commenced our journey to looking at outcomes in 2013 and what were our drivers. So our drivers were, we wanted to make sure we were do doing what we, you know, doing create positive change, we wanted to be able to talk about it, all the things that have been discussed. Um, and we put effort and resources into that and we wanted to evidence our service improvement and innovation. These were our drivers. And I think what's really important as you start, and I think, um, Projects. That was our starting point because I think you're going to do your head in if you start to think about what does everybody else want. You as an organisation, I think that's been our, one of our learnings. You as an organisation need to say this is who we are and this is what we're going to do and then we're going to go for money and how does that money then fit into your outcomes. That's how we've sort of approached it, it, it you know. So I think that's a really big one for me, otherwise really you are going to... So then we, we come back to these questions, I come back to these questions every day. Um, so what is the problem we're trying to address? What do we want to uh, do to address it? What are we achieving? How do we know what we're achieving? What are we learning and how can we improve? And, and like seriously, we do come back to these every day and I think they're really important just to keep, keep, you, keep you true to the journey. So then in, in starting off, um, there were, I wanted to, I'll probably talk very similarly and then I'll drill, drill down, but what we learned so far in our journey I, and we need to keep saying because what we're currently doing doesn't look at outcomes, that's where we're going. So we know that you're doing all, so you know, we know that we're doing it, but we can't show anybody, we need you and without you doing it, they go, oh, Maria, you know, you're telling us, but I just go, without you, without you as my frontline worker putting the data in, we cannot capture anything. So that's where they understand their role, because that's really important, because they're the ones having to dump. We've really changed how we do our client information management system, which I'll come to. But they're the ones doing all of that, because it's a little bit different and it's a lot more work. Um, and we are a learning organisation and we're continuously improving. You have to embrace that to those reliable, you know, reliable to your ex you know, expected outcomes. And don't, you can tinker with it. So what we did at Micro Projects, we said, which I'll, I'll, you'll see it in a minute, but these are the outcomes we want to achieve. How are we going to achieve them? And then we started looking at how we're going to do the, the bar because of little, the IT people like, oh, you know, if we did that, that would look better. But your workflow changes and what you're achieving changes and your outcomes. making sure that what we're doing in terms of um, outcomes is also meeting our different compliance frames. So it's at the back end where you're pulling it out, not at the front, which gives you so much more. So we can now look at a whole, if we're saying these are the outcomes we want to achieve for the people who are coming into micro projects who are homeless, we can capture a whole lot more data that we want potentially rather than just what is driven by, by, by um, our funding. And I think that that's a, a real beauty. The other thing we've done, I think I'll touch on it now, um, is that uh, we haven't had much government support. Um, so we've done it on our own. And the tool that we've used um, in our measurement is that we, we use an effort to outcome. So I think that was that conversation that happened here. So we can, we're trying to show 
uh, both what is our effort and what is our outcome. So leading and then you know those sort of conversations about what is our uh, contribution at what point in this end game. Um, you can probably have those conversations, but yeah. Focus. So yeah, program logic, mate. Program logic. Without it, yeah, you really probably took us the longest time to do. Uh, with the, we've had the theory of change and all things that Jerry talked about. Again, don't let the tool drive the practice. Try and keep it simple in the sense that anybody can look at it and know what can. You know, so it's pretty good. Um, I'll just do some of these which are important. Um, so. Uh, we do it within a life course framework. We look at people, like micro-projects work with people across the life course. So like we have family support, targeted health. So we already know what some of our domains are. We're not looking at anything in isolation. Yeah? How that works, so we looked at that. We looked at the different domains. Um, we are a multidisciplinary organisation, so for those uh, our nursing staff and our, so we have a, a you know, a health uh, support um, teams, they all enter into the same system. The outcomes are all there. So it's not like the nurses are doing one thing and the, and the support workers are doing something else. It all sits in the one frame and the effort to the outcome. Yeah. Um, and you know, what are the right outcomes? They're like, there's a little you know, like we're all ooh, having a big uh, argy bargy because we're all, so did, that's why it took so much time I, I, I hear your short time frames, but I'm like, oh, I, I think it looks... Uh, us. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, I'm going to be realistic and say it took a little bit more time. Um, and then we focus on partnerships and collaboration. So, um, you know, what... I mean, we're talking about social outcomes. It's not about MICA. So it's about the bigger system. So how do we... Inter so when we looked at some of that theory of change, our evidence, we did look at the big data things. We did look at you know, a whole lot of stuff that we will lift into so that we're not just sitting by ourselves, made up some little theory and decided that was really good. We've bedded it into what is really um, an understanding that everybody knows. Um, yeah. So this is sort of how it looks. This is one little part, but there's a bigger, there's all the, above that there's all our program logics and blah, 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 but at the end of the day, um, when we start to look at stuff, we've got short-term and long-term outcomes. What are the indicators? Indicating data, sort of some of your theory change stuff. Input, collected by, effort, and the measurement. And we do that. We're trying to do that now. So we're just in the process of doing that now. Oh, I can see I'm really stressed about it. Um, <laughs> but it's really good. And, and, the, and the difficult... It's easy to talk about. The, the thing for us was the client information management system. How are you going to capture? How are you going to measure? And that's the other thing. Like, we had to really look at our measurement, you know, client information management system, because that's how that all goes in, and then it's got to somehow pop out at the other end. Um, it's not that... Um, so that's where we're at. So, so we're doing that now. <laughs> um, oh, I just wanted to say, so coming back to that, even though that all looks really, you know, um, you know... We go to effort to outcome and we do exactly the same which we did every time. Oh, you're really good, aren't we? We're really good. Really good. Look at that. We're meeting all our outcomes. But you still got to see where the outliers are. What's coming in? Where, where's the change? What's happening? Making sure that you're still dynamic to the people coming into the service and that, and that what you're doing is still real. Otherwise, you're just not offering a service that's useful for anybody. So it's, that's sort of still something that's in our little IP team where we're still working to make sure that uh, that's nice and tight and we cover that off in the organisation. Um, so we just need to, we're just in the middle of doing stuff. So it's, a, it's one of those things that you just got to plant and go once we pull out some of those outcomes and how we're going with the effort to the outcome. Are we, are we, are we um, making sure that we're capturing everything that's happening? Um, Thank you. You all saw that, didn't you? That's fantastic. Okay. I hope this is useful. 
So, you know, Michael's journey, you can't, measure, you can't manage what you can't measure. So is it measurable, worth measuring? Is it critical to our core business? Are we measuring it already? Uh, will it improve? Not really. I mean, practice is practice. You know what I mean? Um, do we have reporting and measuring capacity? Will the measure be understood? And is it aligned to state and national development? Well, again, like Jerry said, this state measurement. So we're just planning. So if government says, wow, you're doing really great work, we can show that we're really effective, the unit cost will, you know, but so there's people are still coming in, which is doing a good job. So I think you need to be careful. The efficiency, then which was the efficiency argument that we had, which was efficiency just sat on its own. How efficient are you? Quick, had a 1% cut, 
1% cut, you know, like, yeah, so that would be the tempering thing I'd say. What outcomes does is it gives us much better arguments about effectiveness, which we haven't had. And then you can have the efficiency, effectiveness, advocacy a lot better, yeah? So, that, so basically, yep, so we're on our journey, we've got our outcomes, we know our goals, we've got a tool, we're cracking on, see how we go, and we'll give you an update. Um, when we um, are probably a bit more down the line, and like I said, if you want to hear more about the actual nursey bits, um, the forum is on, and I really encourage you to listen to Kim Rayner at the forum. Thanks. Thanks so much, Rhea, and thank you so much to you and to Micah for um, just being so sharing of your information, of your journey. I, I think it really helps us to then put in context some of what we've heard from Jerry and from Beck into actually, well, okay, how does that translate for an organisation? And I'll just make a couple of comments just before we um, 